Okay, so welcome back to my little short tutorials which I'm sharing for you on YouTube. Just some introductions to some of the starter kits that we provide at Surrey Art School. Um, just to give you some inclinations about how you can work with some of the materials we've got available. So we've got our kind of regular starter kit for charcoal and that is uh, the 12 sticks of willow and a soft coal which is a, essentially a a chalk and then uh, in the premium kit we've got a few other bits we've got these tinted charcoal pencils and we've got some blenders in there as well for you and just this is just black sugar paper which comes in sort of bigger and smaller packs um, the reason why I wanted to show you this is because I'm a big advocate for working light onto a dark surface so working in reverse and that is a technique that works really really well when you're working with chalk and working with charcoal so I'm going to start off with just some ingredients from the basic kit so I've got this soft white coal here and I've actually snapped off the end because I quite like to work with the you know the whole surface of the material you've got the tip there which can be quite sharp but you've also got the side um, and then I've also snapped off a little bit of one of my willow charcoal sticks um, that's a nice soft charcoal to work with really nice quality for the purposes of our tutorial today and we are going to do a very simple moon and tree study. So I'm going to do a moon, some clouds and a little tree. Um, it was a full moon quite recently and this is a nice way to sort of honour that full moon. So uh, I'm just working with that chalk on the side. I'm going to put all the light bits in first and then I will add in the dark. So just watch as I go here. I'm just going to pull out using the side of this chalk the shape of the moon. So a nice sort of moony circle here. And the secret with chalk and charcoal is not just sort of putting it down, it's the blending. The blending is really, really important. Uh, not only does it push the sort of soft material into the surface of the charcoal, but into the surface of the paper, the tooth of the paper, that gets rid of any dust, it also really helps you to establish the exact tones that you've got going on. So you can blend then, either you can blend with your hands, with your fingers. I don't mind getting my hands dirty, so I tend to blend with my fingers. I'll blend in a circular motion for this moon. Um, if I'd sort of blend it up and down, that would flatten the moon. I want my moon to be rounded, so I'm gonna blend in a circular motion. And don't worry if it's not too clean on the edges to begin with. You don't have to blend all of it either. When you sort of pull your chalk across the surface, some areas may remain quite dark and you might want to leave them that way to sort of show the craters of the moon. So you can blend either with your finger as I'm doing here, just to get that first layer down and also to get rid of any like dust. We really don't want dust on the surface of our paper. Don't know if you remember that little dust no thing from a comedy series. Um, so either you can blend with your finger like I've just done or if you want a sort of cleaner finish if I just pop down a little bit more chalk in that corner for you you can blend it off using one of these um, pastel blenders we sell these with our uh, soft pastel starter kits and a few other things and the whole idea with this is that instead of the sort of thickness of your own finger for blending you end up with a point for blending which is really helpful so I can use that to get a nice clean edge on the edge of my moon and again, I'm just pushing, using my blender, I'm just pushing that chalk into the tooth of the paper, means that you don't end up with a dusty, fusty sort of finish. So either way you want to do it, it's completely up to you. I tend to not mind really getting my hands dirty too much, but if you want a nice clean finish, these blenders are the business, and that's why we sell them as part of the kit. So there's my moon in all her glory, nice glow to her, because I've worked the light onto the dark surface, and some of that dark, from the paper is just sort of peeking through there, which is great, it gives me some shadow tones. If I want to accentuate those shadow tones, I'm going to then work in with a little bit of charcoal, okay? So again, on its side, so you're getting surface and texture rather than a fine point, I can sort of pull in some areas of shadow. I'm going to say this is my lightest side of my moon, and this area is the dark side of my moon. So I'm going to pop a little bit more shadow in there, not going to leave it like that, you could do, I'm going to blend mine off again. So I'm just going to grab my blender and sort of soften that towards the light areas so that the tones are a little bit more subtle, can you see? So instead of ending up with these blocks, we end up with these sort of 
more abstract shapes and it's sort of in a way sort of mimics the pencil in that you're getting that sharp line, that sharp finish. So it's a bit of a push and pull here. I'm sort of checking to see what that looks like as I go. I do tend to trust my intuition a little bit with this stuff. If I move my hand fast enough, then my mind doesn't have time to sort of tell me off or interfere. And there's my lovely glowing full moon. So I want some clouds around my moon as well. You know, the, the full moon rarely r appears on its own without a few clouds on the horizon, especially in the UK, which is where I'm filming this from. So if you want to do the clouds, you want a sort of circular motion, a sort of rounded motion, and you're sort of just popping down a little bit of that chalk again around your moon. And again, if you work from the side, it stops you from sort of over fussing as well. So there's a bit more of a mistiness to my moon. I'll just use my hand to blend that off. And again, I'm rubbing, rubbing in a circular way. And then you can see some of the tones of the paper come through and they will be the shadow tones that I need for that cloud. So that I think is working really nicely, working really well. And it's that circular motion. If organic shapes, you know, or if you want to show something is curved, then blend in a circular motion. Not only will it push the charcoal into the surface of the paper or the chalk into the surface of the paper, um, so you get rid of the dust, but it also gives you an idea of an actual finish. And again, you know, if we want to say this is my dark side of the moon, I can sort of put in a few low lights, I can accentuate some of those low lights that are happening naturally anyway, or those shadow tones that are happening naturally as the paper sort of peeks through. And again, this is a push and pull process. So, you know, do a little bit, stop, have a look, reflect, you know, have I gone heavy enough? Do I need to add a little bit more? Perhaps here where that's going to be my light side of the moon, perhaps I bump that up a little bit with a bit of extra white so it's nice and bright. And then perhaps I do the same on my cloud as well. Press a little bit harder, drop a little bit more of the material onto the surface and you can create some lovely effects that way. And then again, I'll just grab one of my blenders just to soften that off a bit so I get a bit more control and my hand isn't getting in the way and I'm not sort of rubbing away the areas that I've worked on building up there. That's a really nice sort of bump up of that colour and the, oh, sorry, of that tone. There's no colour in here, is there really? It's black and white. So just softening that off a little bit, highly effective, and we shouldn't end up with too dusty a surface, okay? So that uses pretty much just the, the basic starter kit. If we want to get a little bit more refined with it, we want to reach for these tinted charcoal pencils. I've got a dark one and I've got a white one. They are tinted charcoal, they're not chalk, but they are reinforced. So you know how this is very soft and it really crumbles. These ones are sort of strengthened so that they can hold their form and they don't crumble as much. So I'll start off by just putting in um, a very basic tree shape. And no, you're not gonna lead with the dark, Ellie, you're gonna lead with the light. So I'm gonna use just the side of my chalk just to find the shape of this little tree who's sitting under the moon. I don't know how he got there, but he is there. And don't forget to ground your trees. We don't want them floating in space. It would be quite alarming if trees were to suddenly start floating around everywhere. So he's grounded now like that. Um, and I can put in a little bit more texture if I want to down here, just using the edge of my charcoal, for my chalk every single time. And then I'm gonna pull out just a few branches. My tree is sort of swaying in the wind, so I'm gonna send him in that direction with the branches. And I know it seems strange to be drawing something dark with a light material, but trust me, uh, this is just part of the process and it sort of helps to get all the light areas down first especially on what would normally be quite a dark image. So I'm pretty happy with that. Maybe I can get one of my smaller blenders and just blend that off a little bit before I start to work the dark into that surface. And then if you're looking for fine detail or you know finer highlights and lowlights, then this is where these sort of reinforced charcoals come in. So if I'm saying that the light for my moon is coming from there, then here I'm gonna pop a bit of shadow in. So I'm coming in with that reinforced charcoal, 
not only does it strengthen the edge of the tree there, which is quite satisfying, but then I can sort of come in with my blender and blend off towards the middle of the tree so it's not such a heavy line. We don't like dark outlines in the art business. So it becomes more like a shadow and less like a strong line. Can you see that sort of appearing? I'm going to need to go for a blow here because I have got quite a lot of this chalk. So I'm just going to blow it quickly. There we go. I've lost a leaf, but nothing else. So that's good. Um, and then I can keep working in texture onto the surface of this. If I just blend that off quickly because it's a bit of an odd line. Blend that off with my blender. I can soften off these areas a little bit as well, these parts of the tree as I go. I'm going to bring in a little bit more trunk there so that it's in proportion with the rest. If I get these areas where it's um, sort of smudged off a bit too much, just grab your regular charcoal and you can reshape, reshape your tree from the edge. So no outlines so far. We've been working from the sort of inside of the tree. It's a completely sort of flipping things on their head approach, but it does work really well. And can you see that little shadow there that I've put in actually accentuates um, the tree itself. And then onto the tree itself, I'm going to add some texture again, just some sort of lines for the bark, some little bits of mark making there, just to sort of highlight some of those key textures that you might see on the tree itself. Again, you don't need to leave it there. You can soften, you can blend, and blend those into each other. And then again here, I can take this and sort of where, if the light's hitting there, I'm going to pop a shadow underneath each time. So I'm going to add a little bit more texture to the tree itself, just using that lovely reinforced charcoal. These are just so fantastic to work with, folks. They are really lovely. And pop a bit more shadow in there. And then around here, wherever the light isn't hitting, I want to put a bit of a shadow tone and that's going to make my whole tree sort of start to pop a little bit more. So I'm quite happy with that now. Try to avoid the heavy dark outline on either side. I just did it almost automatically there. So I'm just correcting myself as I go along. There's my little tree in the wind and it just makes that difference once you put those shadow tones in and being able to really control that. Of course, you can use the end of your, uh, just like the sharp edge of your chalk or charcoal, but you know, if you're really taking things seriously, then you want some of these guys in your life. And again, other details to so say, for example, I wanted to show just some little bits of grass and texture underneath the tree on this moonlit night. You know how it sort of picks up these little fine details sometimes. And I can do that just using that reinforced charcoal pencil. And again, if I come in with both, not just one, I put in a few shadow tones with the charcoal pencil, the black charcoal pencil, that will all start to pop. It will also start to kind of come to life. So it's that sort of balance, that delicate dance between light and dark here that we want to play with. And this is why I recommend you know, working on a dark surface to begin with. It works really well for um, chalk and charcoal. And you may find it much easier than trying to sort of draw an outline, especially on light paper. I think light paper is quite hard to make charcoal work well on there. And again, fine details, you know, fine textures on the moon, just to show the craters those things can be worked in with that charcoal pencil. We can really accentuate some of those shadow areas on the moon. And each time, we don't want it too heavy, so we'll just soften and blend it off a little bit, but you can get just much stronger mark making from, oh, careful not to smudge your moon out, Ellie. You can put your clouds out, Ellie. You get much stronger mark making, and again, things like this, like the area, the edges of the clouds, can really be reinforced and they're not too chalky, these um, charcoal pencils. They really hold their own so you can get much stronger shapes, much stronger forms 
on your clouds and on the moon itself. So I really hope you enjoy this little mini tutorial I've put together for you. If you like my style of teaching, check out surreyartschool.com because I've got loads of other online classes and courses that you can have a look at there, plus a whole host of beautiful art materials that I'm so passionate about and I'm so happy to share my knowledge and wisdom about too. So have fun, let me know how you get on and see you soon.